I'm Eddie O'Sullivan, and this is This Week in the Italian Campaign. In This Week in the Italian Campaign, the battle for Termoli with my guest, Marco Altobello, who will talk about the battle and its legacy in the town. First, a roundup of what was happening in Italy 80 years ago this month. On the 3rd of October 1943, the 2nd New Zealand Division, commanded by General Freyberg, started landing in Taranto to join the 8th Army. The division had served in Greece, Crete and North Africa. It was the third Commonwealth and Imperial nation in the Italian campaign. The 8th Indian Division had landed on the 24th of September and the 1st Canadian Division on the 3rd of September in Operation Baytown. On the 1st of October, the Canadians had advanced to capture Highway 87, the main road between Termali and Campobasso, in the centre of the Italian peninsula. It met German paratroopers supported by 88mm guns who fought rearguard actions on high points before retreating to the next dominant feature. After more than a week, the Canadians had not yet reached Highway 87. As we learned last time, special forces captured Termoli on the morning of the 3rd of October in an amphibious operation. They were joined around midday by the 2nd Battalion of the Lancashire Fusiliers of 11 Brigade with anti-tank guns and a squadron of scout cars from the 56th Reconnaissance Regiment. They had advanced by land from the 8th Army's front line 50 kilometres to the south while the two other battalions in 11 Brigade headed for Lerino on Highway 87, 20 kilometres south of Termoli. But the pontoon bridge they had used to get into Termoli was swept away by the rise in the river Berferno due to heavy rain. It grew to be more than 50 yards wide and was impassable to tanks and heavy artillery. Meanwhile, Commander-in-Chief South Field Marshal Albert Kesselring had ordered Termoli to be recaptured and the occupiers thrown into the sea. 10th Army Commander General Wichtenhoff sent 16th Panzer Division, commanded by Major General Rudolf Sukenius, which had been resting after the Salerno battle. On the morning of the 4th of October, it started arriving at Palata, west of Termoli, after a 150 kilometre journey. It was divided into two battle groups. One under Rudolf von Döring was ordered to close on the Termoli bridgehead from the west. It pushed towards the village of San Giacomo on a ridge overlooking Termoli. A second under Joachimin Stempel was directed to the coast road to the town. In the bridgehead around Termoli, that morning had been uneventful. The Lancashire Fusiliers had deployed on the perimeter with anti-tank guns. The Recchi Regiment was sent west to Petacciato and warned they might be paratroopers, artillery and a couple of tanks. They in fact captured a dispatch rider from 16th Panzer Division. They withdrew after meeting tanks and Panzer Grenadiers about seven kilometres west of Termini. The special raiding section had spent the morning on San Giacomo Ridge. In the afternoon, most were in a monastery in Termoli when reports of an enemy attack started coming in. Their commander, Major Paddy Main, was asked for help and sent two patrols. Around midnight on the 4th of October, the three battalions of 36th Brigade landed. They replaced commandos and a special raiding squadron unit on the perimeter around at Termoli. In the morning of the 5th of October, Brigade Commander Bernard Howlett sent the 8th Battalion of the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders to clear the San Giacomo Ridge. The 6th Royal West Kent was sent south. Lancashire Fusiliers held the perimeter and the commandos withdrew to Termoli. All were unaware that 16th Panzer was closing in. Earlier, a ford had been bulldozed across the Beferno, 
six tanks of the County of London Yeomanry crossed, but they turned the ford into an impassable morass. The tanks hurried to help the Highlanders, who were in the open and under heavy attack. The West Kents ran into Panzer Grenadiers, a kilometre beyond the Termaly perimeter. The Lancashire Fusiliers on the southern perimeter started to come under tank fire. As German pressure grew in the afternoon of the 5th of October, the Special Raiding Squadron in Termaly was ordered to the western perimeter. Maine led one group in trucks. As the second was about to leave, it was hit by five shells and 11 were killed. The rest joined a mixed group commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Kendall Chavas on high ground overlooking the Sanacra River to block the German advance and support the Highlanders. Howlett ordered the Highlanders to continue towards San Giacomo. They encountered a German tank force. Four Shermans accompanying them were knocked out. The Highlanders withdrew to a brickworks on the road to Termaly, which they held under mortar artillery and tank fire. Their problems were compounded by the lack of a functioning wireless. To the east, six tanks overran part of the West Kents. They penetrated between it and the 3rd Battalion in the 36th Brigade, the 5th Royal East Kent Regiment, known as the Buffs. To the west, three Mark IV Panzers attacked the Recce Regiment, Commandos and the Special Raiding Squadron. Nearly surrounded, Chavas retired to a line on the outskirts of Termaly, held by the Lancashire Fusiliers. The British were being driven back to the outskirts of Termaly itself. Panzers nearly broke through to the vital junction between Highway 16 and the Lirino Road. The senior naval officer in Termaly was ordered to begin preparing for an evacuation. At three o'clock in the afternoon, a Bailey Bridge was finally completed over the Biferno. The rest of the County of London Yeomanry tanks crossed. 36th Brigade counterattacked. The tanks and the buffs re-established positions on the ridge leading to San Giacomo. That night, two squadrons of the Canadian Three Rivers Regiment, which had raced from Manfredonia, crossed the Biferno. By nightfall, 25 tanks were in the Termaly bridgehead. And at 11 o'clock, landing craft started delivering the three battalions of 38 Brigade, known as the Irish Brigade, as the attack on Termaly was reaching its climax. Now, with almost 5,000 men and a growing number of tanks and guns, 78th Division Commander Vivian Evely ordered a general counter-attack from the morning of the 6th of October with the Irish Brigade in the lead. British and American air support was becoming more effective and the arrival of tanks permitted the Special Services Brigade and elements of the 78th Division to reoccupy the positions they had previously held. The Germans were exhausted, having advanced less than three kilometres in two days of heavy fighting. Their final attack was launched at the west of Termaly soon after daybreak and repulsed. At 11.30, the Irish Brigade attack began with the axis of advance following the Pescara Road. The 1st Battalion of the Royal Irish Fusiliers, known as the Fogs, were on the right. The 6th Battalion of the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers, known as the Skins, were on the left. They were closely supported by the Three Rivers tanks. By half past 12, four troops had advanced about one kilometre amid machine gun and shell fire. By one o'clock, the Fogs and the Canadian tanks had reached the brick factory, while the skins were on the high ground to the south. The 2nd Battalion of the London Irish Rifles started to advance at two o'clock and captured Termaly's Wall Cemetery at half past three. By evening, the Fogs had gone a further two and a half kilometres with the Lancashire Fusiliers in reserve behind the brick factory. The skins were on the outskirts of San Giacomo. The London Irish had advanced 1,500 metres from the cemetery to high ground overlooking the Sinacra. 
At seven o'clock on the 6th of October, the Irish Brigade had reached its objectives and was told to dig in. 20 anti-tank guns were positioned around the brigade's perimeter. A further regiment of tanks was deployed in support. The advance continued next morning. At half past four in the afternoon of the 7th of October, 16 Panzer was ordered to withdraw to the west. But the battle for Tomali was over. It had been the largest tank battle of the Italian campaign with more than 100 tanks deployed by both sides. 16th Panzer Division, under strength and sent into battle piecemeal, had failed. It lost a dozen tanks and suffered at least 500 casualties. The 8th Army's casualties were similar and nine of its tanks were knocked out, but it had unhinged the eastern section of the Voltono line which followed the Biferno River. The Germans were forced to withdraw to the River Trigno, 20 kilometres to the north. This was the eastern extension of the Barbara Line, the second of three German defensive lines south of Rome. The Fifth Army's attack on the western section of the Volturno Line was soon to begin. That story will be told in the next episode of This Week in the Italian Campaign. On the 7th of October, Fogg's Captain Laurie Franklin Vale wrote to his wife Olive in the UK about the battle for Termoli. I have just had my first battle experience. I cannot say a great deal about it, except that I came through quite all right. A bullet whisked across my hand and left a slight scar, but there was no other. In the first place, the Germans launched a sharp surprise attack on the area occupied by my company. They moved very fast and nearly cut us off. Subsequently, we put in a very successful attack. The fogs put up a great show as per usual. I was very glad to find I kept extremely cool throughout and never felt the slightest feeling of panic. The hot weather has broken and we are now having a lot of rain, which does not make nights in the open very pleasant. All the dust has been churned up into mud but the flies and mosquitoes are just as bad as ever. Obviously, up near the enemy, it is not very practical to sleep under mosquito nets. We took some Germans prisoners, and a very dejected lot they were, only too anxious to help in any way, and nothing of Prussianism or Nazism about them. It is curious how impersonal one feels. No feelings of hate towards them, just a matter of doing the job in hand. Don't worry, darling. I have faith in my lucky star. All the time the battle was on, I felt I was coming out all right. All my love and kisses to my own most precious wife and darling daughter. Well, um, that was the Battle of Termoli. And uh, before we come into my guest, uh, I'd like her to talk again, as I plan to do each week, about a book that I can recommend for you to read that will give you insights to the events that have just been detailed. And this week, I'm going to refer to Clear the Way, uh, a book by um, a Northern Irish historian and author, uh, Richard Doherty, who wrote the seminal book about the Irish Brigades called Clear the Way. And that tells the story in detail of the Termoli battle, which, as you heard, was essentially in the end, in the final day at least, a 38th Brigade, Irish Brigade event. So, and now we are joined by our special guest, Marco Altabello, who is in Termoli. Uh, hello, Marco. Great to see you. Hello. Good evening. Thank you, Eddie. Good. So, Marco, um, you are um, you live in Termoli. Um, but you also run the municipality's 1943-1945 uh, museum. You've had a few events this week to mark the 80th anniversary. Can you tell us about it? Oh, yes, yes. The, the landing at Tamori and the, the battle that took place uh, over the next days uh, were an important moment for us and for our territory, uh, not just for the population of Tamori, 
but also for the entire territory for uh, the neighboring towns. So every year uh, in Termoli, uh, we remember these events. Uh, and uh, I must admit that uh, every year is different because there are unfortunately uh, fewer and fewer uh, direct uh, testimonies from the people who were still alive in that period. Uh, and uh, this year, the anniversary wa was uh, uh, very heartfelt, uh, obviously, because it's the 80th uh, anniversary, uh, a very important date uh, for us and uh, for the story of the Italian campaign. And for this reason, uh, the municipality of Termoli, uh, the Molise region, uh, organized uh, a series of events uh, to remember uh, the landing and the battle uh, of Termoli. Uh, on October, the 2nd of October uh, in the morning, uh, uh, some direct uh, witnesses, uh, people who lived uh, the battle and uh, the landing, uh, were uh, in the schools uh, and they spoke with uh, the students about their memories. Uh, I was present there, uh, I presented and uh, explained uh, the topic, the story uh, to the, the kids. They are not kids, they are high school boys. So. Uh, they are old enough to understand uh, the importance of these events, uh, in particular for their current condition, which is a condition of uh, freedom, a condition of uh, democracy. And uh, the architect uh, Antonio De Felice and uh, the swimmer Antonio Casolino, he is a very important athlete in Italy, is from Termoli, uh, and they told uh, to the students their memories uh, uh, where uh, they were there to talk about the landing and the battle and the, the things that they saw. Uh, this is a very, very important thing, uh, I think. So, what is the, the what's the story from the people the, from the Italian perspective about these? What are, what are the main memories that people who were there at the time and who are telling the story to children, young people today? Yes, what was the key feature of their memory uh, or what they remember? Uh, the, the most important thing that they always say is that they had enough uh, of the, the Germans. Uh, they, they didn't want again the Germans uh, in Italy, in our territory. So the, the British, the Allied, uh, were always welcomed here. Uh, but uh, there was also some, some fear because it was the, the war. So also the, the British, uh, uh, the British Army, uh, they didn't trust uh, uh, a lot, but uh, after the liberation, they understood uh, uh, that uh, it was the good thing, that uh, we were on the wrong side at the beginning of the war. So the, the most important thing they remember is uh, that at the beginning they didn't trust, but they understand that uh, uh, this was the right thing to do. Do you have any figures for the civilian casualties in Termoli? Uh, is there any detail about how many people, civilians, lost their lives during the battle? Um, no, we have some, some testimony. Uh, also, my grandmother, uh, she lived in San Giacomo, which is near of Termoli. And the Germans retired there in San Giacomo and uh, in Guglionesi, another little town near Termoli. Uh, they, she don't speak about uh, about about that, but uh, uh, she can remember uh, the the noise, uh, the rumor of the of the bombing of the of the Germans uh, that were trying uh, to to put back on the sea uh, the, the British, uh, the English. Okay, so that was on the second of October. I think you had some other events this week. Did you uh, yes. actually for the fifth? And then the, the 3rd of October in the afternoon, uh, uh, the municipality inaugurated some, uh, uh, some pets uh, that were curated by the, the National Association of the Italian Sailors of Termoli. Uh, it's, uh, they, there were some plaques that were positioned at the landing point uh, where today there is the, the Lido Pamphilo. It's a, a betting establishment that attracts many tourists today. Uh, and other historical plaques uh, were uh, written in Italian and in English were positioned uh, along the route uh, that the Germans followed uh, during the retreat uh, toward the inland towns such as San Giacomo, Guglionesi, uh, Palata 
And uh, in this way, uh, an historical journey uh, is born now in Termoli because uh, we can relive uh, the history of the battle and uh, the landing by following this route and uh, this uh, commemorative uh, plaque. Oh, right. so how many plaques have you got? To fit? So you can go from Termoli, follow the plaques to San Giacomo and Gugliesi? Yes, and you can read on this plaque the, the story of the battle in uh, Italian and in English. In the, in the focus point where the battle took place, in each point, there is a, an explanation of what happened in that point uh, during the battle. I think this is a very important thing also for the tourists, because Termoli is a, a touristic place. A lot of people uh, come to Termoli, especially in the summer. Uh, and this is also a touristic uh, occasion, I think. It's a beautiful, got beautiful beaches. I've been there in summer. It's lovely. Yes. So, um, and you had a commemoration event, didn't you? Uh, I think you had some representatives from um, yes. official representatives there. In the evening, uh, yes, all the, the political and the military authorities, uh, together with many citizens, uh, gathered in the Sant'Antonio Cinema. It's a large cinema in the city. And uh, the mayor of Termoli, Vincenzo Ferrazzano, was present. Also the president of the Molise region, Francesco Roberti. And there were also Italian military authorities, uh, officers uh, of the Port Authority, uh, the National Association of Italian Sailors of Termoli, uh, and also many veterans uh, were present. Uh, a representative from the English Embassy was expected, but uh, due to other uh, commitments, uh, they were unable to come uh, to Termoli. Uh, the, I think this is uh, sad because it was the eighth 80th uh, anniversary, so it was an important. Uh, uh, I'm sure that the uh, that would be remedied in due course. Yes, of course, yes, yes. So um, after this commemoration for 80th anniversary, what's going to happen next in uh, Termoli to commemorate these events? Uh, yes, uh, future projects uh, mainly concern the involvement of young people of schools. Uh, I am a teacher too, so. Uh, I think that this is a very important thing. And uh, together with the municipality of Termoli, uh, we are trying to involve young directors uh, to shoot a documentary and record the last uh, testimony of, uh, of the people who saw the landing. Because as I saw, uh, there are not a lot of people uh, that lived the battle and uh, the landing. Another important project, uh, is uh, the construction of a monument uh, in the port of Termoli and uh, the municipality and uh, the Molise region uh, would like to inaugurate the monument uh, of the landing in 1945 uh, for the anniversary of the end of the war. In, uh, I'm sorry, in, uh, 20, for, in uh, 2025 uh, for the 80th anniversary. Uh, an important aspect is also uh, the founds and the discoveries in the sea, in the beaches, as I was, as I was telling you, it's still possible to find some weapons, some amphibious vehicles. So the idea to create a larger museum uh, to, as a house of all these findings uh, is, a, is something that we are working on. Uh, well, you have a museum at present where you help manage. Uh, tell us about the museum you have now. Yes, and the museum is, uh, is most of all a photographic museum. We have a lot of photos. It's also a little library. So we have a lot of books about uh, the battle, about the landing, books in Italian and in English. And uh, I, I want to, to tell you an, an important thing uh, in the in the waters uh, of uh, the Sant'Antonio beach uh, is the beach where the British landed. Uh, an amphibious vehicle uh, was uh, discovered uh, last month. Uh, it was a, a vehicle, a, a duke, a vehicle used by the Allies to reach. Yes, we call it duke. duck. D duck. D okay. D yes, very amazing, amazing. Um, I, it's something I, I can assure you that uh, the special air service and the commanders would the British commanders be very interested in that because that's how they got onto the beach. Yes, yes, it is. A, it, it has an extraordinary importance because 
the duck was discovered by a, a swimmer. He was swimming uh, near the beach on the sea, uh, in the waters where the English landed. So uh, this is uh, an important thing that we could, we can put in the museum. And as I was telling, we have this museum, but we need a larger museum. Uh, so if you're if you're if you're visiting Termoli, uh, when is your museum open? I, I don't understand. Sorry. When is at uh, what times are your is the museum open? Uh, I think that the, the the new museum will be ready in the next two years. No, but if if I visit today and I wanted to see the museum. What, yes. when, when could I go? Is it open all the time, or do oh, you yes, have... yes. It's open the, in the morning and in the afternoon, uh, all the week, all the days, seven days uh, in all the week. It's always uh, open. So you go to the municipality building in Termoli, and if you you go in, and there it is. It's a photographic exhibition about these events. Well, Marco, it's a, a pleasure to talk to you. And can I? please congratulate you on the things that you were doing to memorialize this moment. Uh, the uh, Obviously, my father was there, and it is absolutely extraordinary that your town and the people of the town are making such a strong commitment to the memory of this moment. It's amazing. We're looking forward. I uh, wish you every success with your projects, and hopefully I'll be there in 2025 to see you unveil your new, open your new museum. Oh, yes. I, I wait for you whenever you want. Thank you, uh, Marco. Thank you very much. So God bless. See ya. Well, that's uh, Marco Altabello at Termoli. Uh, anybody wishing to contact Marco, um, you can. I, we can help you with that. But that's it for this week in the um, this week in the Italian campaign. Uh, we will be back next week with another episode de dealing with another sequence of events in the Italian campaign. So until then. Uh, it's goodbye from everybody at This Week in the Italian Campaign and uh, God bless.